Republic Business Emerging Technology Awards, Friday, 5th July 2024. Get ready to witness the best technology extravaganza of the year. The first edition of the Republic Business Emerging Technology Awards has received an overwhelming number of nominations. Enter the world of technology as we enter the world of digital and uh, as we enter the world of the confluence between media, technology and digital. And I want to start by just giving a personal anecdote. Uh, as we enter the and I want to start by just giving a personal anecdote. I was in Moscow in 2024. And by the way, it's very good to see so many familiar faces around here in the room. So great to see all of you and to my young friend Ritesh. Thank you, Ritesh, for coming. In, 20, in 2015, I was invited to Moscow. And there was this big event, the Russia Today uh, global event. And media heads were there. Republic in the sphere of the automotive industry, it could be gaming. But really, the world is changing at a very fast and frenetic pace right in front of our eyes. So the same thing is happening in the field of education. And here, technology isn't just a tool anymore. It's a transformative force reshaping traditional learning paradigms. Ladies and gentlemen, as classrooms around the world adapt to the challenges of the digital age, EdTech companies are truly stepping up with innovative solutions to meet these new demands. So coming up, a very interesting panel. This is EdTech, the new demands. I am thrilled right now, of course, to bring together some of the brightest minds in education technology to share with us their passion, expertise, and the groundbreaking ideas. And of course, we do have breaks coming up, ladies and gentlemen, in just a little while. But I understand, I understand certain needs. So. Um, do come back in a few minutes because you don't want to miss the exciting action on stage. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Sibaram Khara, Vice Chancellor, Sharda University. Welcome, sir. Our esteemed panelists comprising Venkatesh Madurai, Subramanian, founder, Apna Vekas. Welcome back, sir. Manoj Jain, CEO, Ishika Digitech. In moderating this wonderful panel will be Rajat Mishra, Assistant Editor, Economy and Policy, Republic Business. Welcome, sirs. We're looking forward to deep diving into the new demands in the landscape of EdTech. So, after a magical session, it's time to shift our focus to one of the sectors uh, which has seen uh, the trajectory involving the boom, the bust in the last four years. And if we talk about the scale, before starting this panel discussion, let me give you the scale and the snapshot of this industry. So India is the second largest edutech uh, uh, sector, largest market for edutech sector in the world after US. Its market is around $5 billion now and it's expected to reach almost $10 billion by 2025. Also, uh, we have seen the story of boom bust in the last four years and uh, there cannot be more interesting time than this to discuss the Adutech panel. So to discuss and to get more insights on this, let me quickly have with me uh, Mr. Shiboram Khara, Vice Chancellor, Sharda University. I have with me Mr. Tarun Saini. Uh, I have, sorry, uh, I beg your pardon. I have with me Mr. Venkatesh Madurai Subramanyam, founder. Uh, I have with me Mr. Manoj Jain, CEO, Ishika Digitech. Uh, so let me come to you, uh, Mr. Uh, we know in the last four years the kind of trajectory that Edutech sector had, uh, starting from the boom phase during the pandemic. Then in 2023, we saw that some sort of a bust in the sector happening. Obviously, there are certain opportunities lying ahead that we need to tap. Give me a sense in which direction this Edutech sector is heading. Yeah, thank you very much. Say, uh, the digital practice, you no, know, the EdTech company really boomed in uh, during the pandemic because we are forced uh, to adopt uh, the digital techniques to run our academics. Uh, of course, before that, the, uh, the usage of uh, the digital techniques in the teaching learning process 
was not much except some of the uh, ed tech courses and some of the LMS system. And after that, the you know, trend actually changed because from there you have, uh, you know that uh, the, in India specifically, uh, national education policy came up and then uh, the target of GER has been given, you know, in higher education 50% enrollment uh, will be there, the GER uh, gross enrollment ratio. So to fill those targets, uh, uh, as you know, the government has in taken initiative that online education. So this is the new concept came and that is strengthened. And now you know uh, the, the, all these universities, those who are deserving this eligibility, they are launching the online educations. This is one part. And of course, in a, uh, since after pandemic also, we adopted some of the techniques and now uh, the technology enabled teaching learning process. Uh, that is very, very important. And also the liberal educations, the flexibility to earn the credits uh, for the students. So 40% credits can be earned. No, the, earlier these uh, regulations were not there. So with advent of this particular flexibility, so all university you know, students are now has the liberty to choose the courses. And uh, this online and then your advanced uh, teaching learning that is LMS. That is very, very important because the university need to manage uh, such versatility and the students and then uh, online and blended mode, all those things that technology is very, very important. So the, any education institutes nowadays, if they keep pace with the adoption of the proper technology and they will really take the lead in these aspects. And uh, overall, uh, uh, as you have told that some boom was there, but that is the peak of the COVID, that's why issues are huge. And, uh, but I am, uh, I am seeing it that without technology, with the edtech technology, uh, in future, it will not be possible to right. implement the education at least in an effective way and way you are expecting. So, edtech technology will be there and more uh, AI embedded features uh, used to induct and it will come and uh, they will really facilitate the students, the teachers, the managing the learning management systems and then designing the curriculum and on top of that, the mentoring and very personalized care of the students. Otherwise, it is very difficult to uh, take very personalized care and measurement and mentoring and guidance and without huge data and proper analysis through the AI and then giving suggestive you know, measures and, and, and that will help actually. So that's right. why AI enabled and advanced technology, both the hardware, because we need to make some smart classes for the blended learning and others, as well as software both will actually boom up again. Right. So, Venkatesh, coming to you, as we have seen, uh, considering the trajectory of edutech sector, people are saying that experts are saying the story is over, right? And the kind of uh, incidents, massive layoff, and the downside things that we have seen. Uh, what are the opportunities that are lying ahead for the sector? Because uh, there is a lot of negative sentiment floating around the sector now. So, just clear the fog around it and just explain what are the opportunities lying ahead for the edutech sector, especially in India. I think uh, the opportunities are there for people who seek them. There are success and failures everywhere. And what I always try to do, even myself personally, is if there is a failure, I need to fail fast. It's okay to fail. So it's perfectly okay. I, I've had one startup failure during COVID. It's perfectly okay. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the failure that you're speaking about, or examples that you're hinting at, <clears throat> I personally believe that the focus was in the wrong place. The focus was on the traditional valuation game and perception and blah, blah, blah. But if one was to focus on the value that one can create in the society, then I think we are talking of some really serious disruptions, really serious value creation. You create value, benefits will flow. If I create value, benefits will flow in terms of visibility, in terms of revenue, in terms of society growth, whatever, benefits will flow. And I think the government has got a big role to play there. For example, what I see happening on certain AI implementations, like the AI for Kisans, for example, by the government of India, and a couple of steps already taken by NCRT, where the entire, entire catalog of CBS is available online in PDF. Fantastic starting points. I think the only thing that is going to limit us, us as a society, as startup, as entrepreneurs, is our own imagination. Right. The human intelligence has to play a factor over top of 
any today's AI, tomorrow it will be AGI, automatically generated in intelligence. So I think the human intelligence and the capacity to dream and to do something beyond what one sees today is, is, uh, is what will make the difference. Can I give you a small example? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, you can go. See, in the Mahabharata, you had uh, that, that famous character Ekalavya, right, who had to sacrifice his thumb because he was hiding somewhere else and listening to Dronacharya guiding the children. Today, Ekalavya wouldn't have to sacrifice his thumb. All he needs is internet access and somebody who's created a good AI machine. Right. And the reason I say that, by the way, very quickly to wrap up, is the books are there, the content is there in CIT. What prevents the government or any organization from implementing text to speech so that, and speech to text, so that a student in Kannada, Telugu, Bangla, Telugu, whatever, any language, he or she just speaks to a bot and that bot replies in that language back from the NCIT content. It can help students, it can help teachers, parents, everybody. So I think imagination and the willingness to contribute positively will, will make a big difference. And do you think uh, that since we are talking about the opportunities lying ahead and you highlighted uh, AI, I just want to ask you, do you think that AI is something which is going to open the gate of opportunities in education sector and it's going to push the growth trajectory for this sector? Absolutely. Uh, I think in, very soon AI is going to be as common as websites. If you have your own personal business or your own personal presence online, sooner or later, just like how many of us have websites, you'll have an AI version of yourself. It's going to happen. But look at this. We are at a growth trajectory nationally. Visualize in a few months from now, because right now it's not in a shape that's scalable and affordable and, and fast enough, but visualize sometime down the line, a small trader or a student in Meerut, he or she is talking into a mobile phone in his or her language in Hindi or a dialect, and the tutor sitting anywhere across the world in India is replying in their language and they both seamlessly converse with each other without a delay. Visualize that. You know, so I think we, it really depends on how we implement and how we really take this forward and make it affordable for the grassroots. That's where it's going to make a difference. Right. Coming to you, uh, Mr. Jian, uh, since you have written a book on AI and the, uh, and the opportunities and the risks uh, associated with AI, let me ask you this question. And in exclusive in, uh, conversation with Republic Business, one of the leading political scientists of the world, Ian Bremer, said, uh, that AI is uh, moving faster than the regulations and the government and it's, it poses a societal risk also. And considering the tech divide in the country, what do you see? Uh, AI is also a kind of a risk factor in education sector and edutech. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, what I will say, AI is a tool. Now, if you use uh, with a handle with care means if you use very sincerely, it is a good tool. But, yeah, it is making a, peop making, making a, a human being a lazy. People are going, uh, going to AI for any help. They are not coming to the teacher or they are not coming to the parents. Earlier we used to ask some questions to parents, some t to teachers. Now anything you go and search in AI you get. So there is a danger, yes. There is a big danger. There is a big danger and uh, I believe uh, if everybody is going to only switch over to AI because there are some errors also in AI, it can create a uh, hazardous problem. You can understand. Can you just yes. specify that danger since you have highlighted the danger? Can you just pinpoint what See, that danger is all about? AI is made by human only, yeah. And now whatever things are there store, it is coming out from there. Now. They are, they are not uh, like uh, intellectual, like human being. So if I ask some answer, there may be some wrong answer, some, there may be some wrong guidance. Now, if, whatever I do, even if I want to go for a tour Kashmir, I just write to chat GPT, I want to go for three days tour to, uh, to Kashmir, please give me an itinerary, they give. So we believe in that and we go. But we never know whether they are right or wrong. So this is one of the examples. So like the student also, they go and ask anything and they, they believe in this. They say this is the right. Yeah, I mean, let's just look at the drones example, right? Much before the regulations were in place to shoot down a drone that's not licensed, where the government doesn't know who is running and operating that drone, it was a free-for-all. Technology is not going to wait for the governments of the world to 
implement standards. What we have in uh, terms of data prevention and uh, uh, privacy protection act last year is a fantastic step. Uh, Europe is miles ahead. In addition to GDPR, they already have something on responsible AI. But in India too, we have something similar already in terms of responsible AI. For example, you can no longer just use anybody's voice and video and generate something without the permission if you use any of the big, big platforms. Even without regulations, that governance is already in place. So I think the Indian government is acting fast. We just need to keep up that pace. Coming to you, uh, Mr. Khara, since you are the Vice Chancellor of Sharda University, you head an educational institute. Uh, my question to you is, how are you implementing EduTech as far as your campus is concerned? That's number, question number one. And the second question is, uh, do you think that AI is going to replace the professors and the teachers in university as well? Before that, I want to add you know, one important point, the, the AI threats. You know, uh, once you give the assignments to the students, you know, there is possibility that sometimes they just open the chat GPT version 4.0 and uh, get the solutions of the assignment and just submit it. So it is very difficult for faculty you know, to check. Again, they have to take help of the again open AI to whether it is generated by the AI. Okay. Uh, you'll be surprised that in some of the poems instantly can be written using, so it's very difficult. Some of the survey-based uh, papers instantly can be generated. So there are some of the aspects are there which I wanted to add on. And uh, these are all little threats as far as education is concerned. Uh, as far as Sarda University is concerned, we are fully digitized because we have Sarda Tech, our own uh, company and uh, they in-house develop all the education uh, you know, support software. So our entire administration system and entire learning management system, research, tracking, data harvesting, uh, all those things, and laboratories, virtualizations, and all the classrooms are uh, equipped with the smart uh, board. And, and the smart board has a lot of facilities because you have, uh, you can store, you can manage that itself is the computer, you can share the link from there. So even we have online programs, some of the live classes they can attend and then you record and then content is automatically going against that lecture in the repository. So it is going to the library so they can again access it. So the technology has a lot of advantages and then such a big university uh, versatile and multidisciplinary because we have every programs and almost uh, 95 country students are studying there. There are timetable preparations. So again, AI come and very instantly without conflict of time uh, or table, you can prepare the timetable, then exam seating. And now we have adopted the uh, evaluations. Right. So evaluation, you scan it and you upload it and faculty members can evaluate from anywhere. Then questions are mapped with the skills, not only the grade, then what skills they have acquired automatically. Uh, all those you no know, analytic results and if you put AI on that then if you train the machine you no know, software that some of these aspects they can predict and give some review that is also implemented we are extending that on top of that you no know, we have recently established uh, supercomputer this is Nvidia uh, GTX H100 so you will surprise that our scientists are working when bioinformatics to design one vaccine it will take six months time for the simulation but such as AI is there and high computing machine, it will take only three hours. So now scientists has, has the advantage that such a high computing and with AI, the protein combinations and goal, then predicting, then again you simulate, then again you retune. So likewise, vaccine discovery will take very less time. And a similar uh, model is there such as you have huge uh, medical images. So you, you train the machine, whether it is a brain scan or cervical or heart, uh, then uh, medical imaging and then put AI and then diagnostic model. So with 90% prediction, uh, without going to you just upload your uh, reports, uh, there's a scan and then it is giving you the uh, reports. So mm -hmm. those are the beauty of the AI, you know, that way you train the machine and, and then you take the advantage of the machine. So that, that is the beauty and positiveness. But machine can be trained and you can <laughs> utilize for other use also, there is the threat. Absolutely. AI is going to replace professors and uh, teachers? Yeah. That I don't think so because uh, I, I, I have heard that now uh, in, in the advanced version of the uh, some AI 
the emotion because a lot of things have been developed now they are trying to embed the emotion yes so so a man is sitting in front of me or or you are sit, seeing the cricket match and then way the people know so their emotion and body reactions or students are sitting in the class how much they are attentive or who are all audience, audience know all those things i think many things are going to come very soon so that emotion management will come but uh, whatever may be whether emotion something you are getting but i do not know how with how much prediction is human being is very dynamic and very difficult to know uh, uniformly program that their emotion will be calculated based on this data because each human being is different and uh, to replacing the you know, real faculty with ai i i don't think so it will happen that will be mess up for current as it, this is my comment but anyway uh, we can take help of the ai better way to engage the students to give better experience very tough and complex understanding we can simplify and give lot of demonstration and simplifications of the animations and so in the virtualization platform their way these things can be helpful technology but all together any anyway, all these things to be program curriculum and the lesson plan is to be designed by uh, the uh, the faculty members if you want that this machine is to design that and then then it can replace then everybody will be taken by the replace but that is a very uh, i do not know hypothetical thinking yeah, years years to come will tell uh, where we are going but i yeah, don't think it will happen yeah obviously for that we will have to wait and watch and uh, since we have paucity of time so i will just take a concluding remarks from each one of you uh, starting with you mr jain uh, how do you see because we have seen the trajectory in the last 4 years what more needs to be done in the edutech sector to to again uh, stride it back on the path of growth right that's number part one and the one word that comes to your mind when you think about the edutech sector going forward see uh, i think uh, it is uh, edtech is going growing very fast uh, we can understand after the covid after the pandemic it is going very rapidly growing very fast and uh, earlier it was only in the metro cities now you can see in tier 2 and tier 2 three cities also just because of the connectivity the accessibility and affordability because it is very affordable a student from from the remote area can afford can can reach to the uh, best faculty best education facility over the uh, anywhere across the globe and this is just because of the accessibility and connectivity available thanks to the all the internet providers uh, 5g providers that uh, we are reaching everywhere and uh, the main thing which uh, which is which is uh, coming up is that earlier the girls were not able to go to the best facility from the remote area from the villages now it is possible the women are not giving up the education they have a desire to continue the education because of this uh, uh, tech so ed tech is a big, big i think there is a big boom coming up and by 2025 it is going to be around 400 billion dollar industry in the world and one word that comes to your mind when you think about the edutech sector going forward pardon one word that comes to your mind when you think about the edutech sector and the growth potential it has it it is a it is going to be tremendous growth uh, i can say and the government is helping out in every way the, the every digital industry so i think uh, it is going to be having a tremendous boom in the year to come and with the government working out every day giving the push to the technology giving the digital tech, uh, digital era is coming up and the, with the help of the ai and the different tools earlier the earlier the education ed tech was limited to only the classroom now it is going to the different uh, devices uh, the use of mobile mobile users you can understand every every home might be having at least 3 to 4 mobile so right. mobile device each individual so it is ed tech is very event uh, coming up and so i will say it is it is going to have a tremendous boom in the year to come Thank Venkatesh, you. coming to you. Uh, so, what more needs to be done as far as the tech, tech sector is concerned? And one word that comes to your mind? I would say empower and democratize. Even even somebody of my age in rural India should be able to use ed tech to educate himself or herself. Number one. Number two, also to to with AI translation is just a detail. What we are doing in this country with Bhashini, for example, mm -hmm. brilliant brilliant objective. today if we look at skill development there is a worldwide not just in india by the way there is a big need for soft skill development more and more companies are investing in it in india 18% 18% of 
people, they say, are unemployable because of lack of soft skill amongst mid-sized companies in India. So a question all of us need to think about is why is soft skill development in India only done in English when less than 10% of the population in India knows English? More than 50% of our population use the internet in regional languages. So we need to do a lot more to democratize, to make things accessible, affordable, and powerful. And like one of my gurus in marketing said, that we need to make AI our slave rather than the other way around. <laughs> right. And one word that comes to your mind? Sorry? One word that comes to your mind… Empower. Uh, empower. Mr. Khara, one word that comes to your mind when it comes to edutech edu sector's growth potential going forward? Yes, it has uh, exponentially uh, the edtech companies, uh, uh, the market will grow. In terms of the, all these smart, smart hardwares, still it is required to manage the smart educations and uh, devices along with uh, the embedded software. And as you know that uh, still uh, less than 50% of the educational institutes, they have the good uh, uh, the digital infrastructures. So over the time, the way we are uh, forwarding and then uh, the, the ed tech is to be adopted in full-fledged uh, managing the educations as well as uh, the knowledge and laboratories, smart equipments, virtualizations, and then interaction with the online educations, and then evaluations. And of course, uh, still low cost, some solutions will be there, multi-language, uh, the delivery, but Vasini and a similar kind of softwares. And uh, I'm sure that with the role of, of the 5G and next by 2030 with the uh, advent, induction of the 6G where AI will be embedded and, and then EdTech will be grow and it will have ever growing markets. Thank Absolutely. you. Sir. Yeah, so it uh, just because of positive time, we will have to conclude. To uh, we require whole day to discuss. Just yeah. wanted to add one thing. Uh, so many ed tech companies are coming different every day. Uh, softwares and apps are launching. There has to be a re government regulations in pipeline. Otherwise, there will be a big problem because lots of scams and frauds are coming up. So we have to be aware about this. This wanted to aid. So re government regulation has to be there. There should be no over. There should be a balance between the oversight and the and, and the innovations. Right. There should Absolutely be there. right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so we are ending on a right road. Empower and democratize is a mantra going forward for edutech sector. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us and speaking to Republic Business at Republic Business Emerging Tech Awards. Thank you so much. Big thank you to our esteemed panelists and of course our moderator, thank you so much.